The New York Times has a very popular game out that so many people are playing and they're talking about it and super popular. It's called Connections. And it's where they put together 16 words that at first glance, um, you don't know what they have in common. But your job is to put them in four groups of four. So you have to find out the commonality of these words to put them into a group. And I thought it's a really fun, addictive game. And it's, um, you know, so many people are, are doing it every day, which is cool. I'm thinking, why can't we adapt the connections game to people? We need to more than ever be more connected to people. Um, we're distracted. We've got... Um, we're working on the internet, we're on our computers, we're texting people. And I think it's it's time to reconnect with people, especially people who are different than us. It's so common to stick with your own, your own group and it, you can tell you're all in the same group. The challenge is to look at other groups to find out, well, what do we have in common? What would put us in another group and what would we call that? And the reason why I'm talking about this today is because I had an, um, a really cool incident that happened um, in Saudi Arabia. And it's another culture. It's another religion that I was experiencing. It was another country altogether. I mean, I really had never been there before, and it was a fascinating experience. It was an honor to speak at Princess Noor bin Abdurrahman University. And, um, but there was an incident that happened at the hotel I was staying at that made me think of this concept of little moments in time where you can create a connection with another human being when seemingly you don't have anything in common, but if you just, just do one little thing, you realize there could be a connection. And it was a woman behind the desk, the front desk of the hotel. And I went up to ask a question and they had little candy dishes in front of each of the computers. And so um, as I went up and said hello to ask my question, I grabbed a piece of candy. She immediately took my hand and I thought, uh oh, maybe I wasn't supposed to grab the candy. So I gave her the candy back. She gave me back the candy and she grabbed my hand so that she could get a closer look at my manicure. And it surprised me. It was like, oh, OK. And she, I couldn't see her face because she was wearing a niqab. So I could see her eyes. And I noticed after she was looking at my manicure, her eyes started to smile. And as if to think, I mean, I was thinking she was probably saying, wow, the, the, those are pretty, they're cool, they're different. I don't know. All I know is that there was a sense of approval and appreciation of my manicure. So then I took my hand back and then I gave her the piece of candy. And this time she kept the candy. And it was so funny. We both laughed. And it was it was a connection. And I know it may seem so trivial and so minimum, but I realized when I was in Saudi Arabia that my preconceived notion was it's going to be so very different. But as I delivered my speech to all these amazing PhDs and deans of the different colleges, I realized we have a lot in common. Um, we all have some sort of insecurity, some sort of fear, some sort of aspiration in our life. Um, so all it takes is for us to be curious, to ask more questions, to show up, and don't be afraid to make a connection with someone who is seemingly different than you. So on this Front Row Friday, I hope to connect with you, and I hope you continue to connect with other people. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.